welcome you to this special worship service today. Special because it's a baptismal Sunday. And we're excited to have Peyton and many members of her family here with us. We'd also like to welcome Dr. Michael and Amanda Buck, Dennis Van Hygienist from Preston and Shannon Eads with them today. We welcome all of you who are visiting for the baptism and those of you who are regular members and attenders, we welcome you as well. We call to your attention announcements in the bulletin and then we'll highlight several that aren't in the bulletin. Today at 4 o'clock at the Platt Center Presbyterian Church, a Southwest Iowa partnership meeting. I neglected to put it in the bulletin. Four o'clock today at the Platt Center Church. Please note our Bible study session members. Note the session meeting on Wednesday night here at the church. And our Sharpsburg Bible study group will continue 315. And some of you come down to Sharpsburg for that. 315 on Thursday. We also want to remind you that next Sunday we will not have worship here, though we are having worship. We are joining with the Christian Church and the Methodist Church and every other church in town that wants to participate in a special community-wide service at the United Methodist Church to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the town of Lenox. And Connie, I think you want to make an announcement related to the Stand up and come forward just a little bit. This is your last chance. You've got treasures in the cedar chest or on a bed that Grandma made or Aunt Maud or you. It doesn't have to be a full-size quilt. It can be a table runner. It can be a wall painting. We want to see them. Next Saturday, Friday and Saturday at the end of this church, I set up registration forms in the entryway. you got questions. My number is still in the book. <laughs> Give me a call. We want to fill that church up. Thank you. Thank you, Connie, for helping to celebrate, for reminding us that we need to help celebrate the 150th of Lennox. Also a reminder that our church is just two years away from celebrating our 150th. So any ideas that we can steal from the Sussex Centennial, we will. Also, Vacation Bible School this year is being hosted by the United Methodist Church. Again, it's a community-wide, multi-church effort. It's one day, Saturday the 9th of July. There are registration forms in the back. So we'd love for any of you kids, sixth grade and under, who want to sign up for VBS, do so. And if there are any adults who would be free to help, they're looking for two volunteers from our church in addition to those who are preparing the breakfast. Any other announcements that need to be made? I just yes. want to say thank you to everybody who turned in their baby bottles. And if there's anything else you guys want to want to turn it in, that's great. Hold it up. Baby Bottle Boomerang Project is coming to an end. For those of you who took baby bottles, filled them, and brought them back, Rita's ready to receive them and turn them in. Let us worship God. Our song of preparation is printed in your bulletins. Sanctuary. We'll sing it through two times. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary.
bulletin. As God's people together, let us confess our sins. Holy God, our desire is to be pure and holy, tried and true, and yet we fall short, day after day, week after week. We are sinners who struggle to live according to the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive us, we pray. Take away not only our sins, but our desire to please ourselves instead of you. We ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our assurance of pardon comes to us from Paul's letter to the Romans. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But we are now justified by God's grace as a gift through the redemption that is ours in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I declare to you the truth. All your sins are forgiven. Now join me in the call to praise, which again is printed in your bulletin. We are the people of God, so let us praise God. Let us make a joyful noise to God. We will declare the greatness of God together. Stand as we sing hymn number eight, All People That On Earth Do Dwell.
They get clean. Remember that. What else do we do with water? You drink it, and what happens when you drink water? Ah, oh, you get refreshed and your uh, thirst is quenched. What else do you do with water? Think about the summertime. <laughs> swim! <laughs> What's water like when you swim in it? Cold and warm. Cold and warm depends, right? <laughs> yeah. Is it fun? Yes. Yes. Water has all kinds of uses. Got any idea what's in here? Water. Good job. This is a bowl. And guess what's in it? You can put your hand in it if you want to try. What is it? Water. water. Perfect. Those boys know what water is. They don't need to touch it. Water. And you know what water is used for in the church? Sorry. We do not have a church swimming pool. <laughs> but we use this water to baptize. It's when we take water and we sprinkle it over. <laughs> Children, sometimes adults, yes, water. And what does it do? It refreshes us. It's in the bathtub, that's right, and we get clean. Baptism is kind of like going into the bathtub. It's got, yes, Peyton, did it? Oh, did I not sprinkle any on you? That's a foretaste. Because you're going to get more in a little bit. It's a reminder that God loves us and that God wants us to drink deeply of all that is good. Do you know that Jesus said, I am the living water. He who can refresh us and wash us clean and forgive our sins. And in baptism, God claims us. And you know what God says to us? You belong to me. That's what baptism is all about. So guess what we're going to do next? We're going to ask Zach to come forward to join Kara. We're going to ask two elders of our church, Julie and Becky, to come forward and help us in a baptism, a claiming a child as God's own child. And Peyton is already waiting at the elders. <laughs> Becky's going to hold the water. And Julie, I have... Zach, would you come up and join us? You guys can stand over with Becky. You're, you're perfect right there, Julie. Except I had a sheet for you. <laughs> Here it is. Center. We have to get you on live stream. So perfect. <laughs> perfect. Hi, Peyton. I'm coming up here too. Okay, Becky, you can step up. Do you know that all who are baptized into Christ Jesus are baptized into his death? that we might rise again, obeying the word of our Lord Jesus Christ and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. 
In baptism, God claims us, Peyton, and seals us. God frees us from sin and death and unites us with Jesus Christ. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church universal, the body of Christ. We are joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Brothers and sisters, let all remember their own baptisms as we celebrate this sacrament. Hi, Kate. <laughs> Zach and Kara, do you desire Peyton to be baptized? Do you promise to raise her up in the Christian faith and to teach that faith to her? Yes. Family members, do you promise through your prayer and example to support and encourage Zach and Kara as they raise Peyton up to be a faithful Christian, do you? indeed up. Uh, oh, just a sec, kids. We'll get to you in a second. <laughs> Affirmation of faith printed in your bulletin. Following the baptism, let us affirm our faith using the words of Jesus Christ as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. Together, Jesus said, let the children come unto me 
and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God is theirs. So kids, we would normally have for you little bags for you to take back, but I underestimated how many kids we would have, and I'm not going to give half of these bags and send the rest of you empty-handed. But we do happen to have a few candy bars. Would you settle for those? Yeah. <laughs> we have paydays and Reese's peanut butter cups. One's chocolate and one's not. And because you were so wonderful for the baptism, I'm giving you one of each. You may go to your seat after you have received your treat. And if you want to share one with your parents or somebody, you can. If you want to eat them both yourself, you can. You're welcome. back and give one to Peyton back there, please. She's right in the back row. We'll get yours. <laughs> and Linda on my way in and he 
is doing good, he's walking, he uh, is not in hardly any pain whatsoever, she said. Wonderful, so he's made a great recovery since I saw him Friday night. Perfect, thank you for an update on Dean. Others to be lifted up in prayer today. And my uh, daughter Jennifer was just up here and had her appendix out, you know, and now she's come down with COVID. And my granddaughter, which is her granddaughter, she's like two, she also has COVID. COVID seems to be coming back. We lift up Jennifer, who just had appendicitis. Yeah. And she recovers from COVID. Well, uh, they got a call yesterday from Connor, and uh, he's had his shots, and uh, he's now uh, positive for COVID. So Connor admits to his basic training. Quarantine for um, a week, and they said he'll have to make up that. You know. He doesn't seem to be sick, they said. It's just that uh, you know, we hope he won't be. Connor Fitzgerald. We also lift up from our Sharpsburg Church and they watch live stream from Tennessee. His family, Levi Breach, completed the first part of his basic training, or completed basic training for the Air Force, and has now moved on to his secondary training. His family asks that we lift up a joy that they were able to be with them. Jill and Roger Breach, the grandparents, Daniel and Melanie, his parents, his brother and sister. And also, if we would lift up all those going through basic training in the heat, I guess 50 of those who were receiving awards for graduating from basic training fainted during the outdoor celebration. Uh, the heat is tremendous in Texas. Others today. Continued prayers for people of Ukraine in this situation. Becoming increasingly painful. Listen to the news. For the people of Ukraine. One of our own members, Lana Barnum, who's now in a care facility up near Cherokee, Iowa, called this morning. She's been going in and out of the hospital with infections and having a real difficult time. If we could lift up Lana Barnum in our prayers. Yes. Continuing to look up Tyrell's family and she and through her pregnancy. The Tyrell Miller family. Tyrell killed in a traffic, tragic traffic accident. His sister Amanda, fiance Shannon here today, and we lift up Shannon as she works toward her due date. Is it okay if we pray for you too, Heather? <laughs> <laughs> others today that need to be lifted up. Sandy's pointing. Okay. Thank you. Continue prayers for my family. Corey's still struggling. My sister Brenda, since my sister Becky died, they were loving us, but she's really struggling. Um, and Willie Agins. Did you say Willie Agins? His family, yes. Thank you. For Willie Agins and family and for Ashley and the whole Bird family. It's her sister, Becky, really struggling, or Brenda struggling because of Becky's death. And if we lift up Corey, Corey Mason, newly widowed. Lauren and Laura Schultz have COVID again for the second time. Yes, a special thanks to Becky for standing in as our piano player. Laura was scheduled to play today, but she came down with COVID for the oh. second time. Lauren has it, and worse than she does, or the symptoms are worse. So if we would please remember Laura and Lauren Scholl in prayer. Wow. Connie. Steve's having
perfect. Connie's parents sold off much of their farm equipment at an auction yesterday, and we lift up Steve, who's dealing with what we don't know, but he doesn't have any energy. We lift him up. Any other prayers? Unspoken requests go up to the Lord. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we celebrate with Peyton this glorious day. And Lord, we know that you flamed Peyton long ago and that you are using her to bring love to this whole world. Help us to embrace her attitude, her love, her openness, her reaching out. And help us to do so on a daily basis. We pray for the whole team family, but especially Jim and Vicki today. We're remembering Julie and Savannah as well, as they all recover from an automobile accident. We pray for Dean Hogan, who seems much better as he recovers from open heart surgery. And Lord, you've heard about COVID affecting Jennifer and Connor. My sister Kathy and many others bring healing and strength. We give thanks for Levi Breach completing his basic training and pray for all those in basic training. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for Lana Barnum. We pray for the Miller family, Shannon in the midst of her pregnancy and Heather in the midst of hers. We lift up Ashley and the whole Bird family as they mourn. We lift up Corey in a special way, Lord, that you would reach out and touch him with your love. We pray for Willie Akins and his daughters as they deal with cancer. We pray for Lauren and Laura and for Steve and for all the unspoken concerns of our hearts. Lord, we lift them up to you, praying the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of meditation remains seated. 400. 30. And we'll sing the refrain, then we'll sing the three verses, and then end with the refrain.
today is the last day to have your gifts to the First Arabic Presbyterian Church matched by the session. Again, we did this throughout June after already giving them a $500 gift in honor of the fifth anniversary. Presbyterian Church Camp is coming up. If you're interested in going, see me and don't forget VBS July 9th at the United Methodist Church. Let us receive our morning tithes and offerings. Luke, 
chapter 9. Hear the word of God. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they would not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another, Jesus said, Follow me. To another, Jesus said, Follow me. And he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but as you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said to him, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This has been another impromptu theater. <laughs> I gave them each 30 seconds. <laughs> I have a long time family friend who from the time we were both teenagers has engaged with me in theological discussions. Mind you, he was the son, or is the son, of an anthropology professor from the University of Virginia, while my father was a chaplain at the University of Virginia Hospital and a Presbyterian minister. So our discussions were often as much about our starting points as our ending points. Those discussions became more intense once I became a pastor. In fact, this friend once even traveled down to Kentucky to stay with Sandy and me for about a week as he grilled me on some of the questions that came to him from his Bible reading. This friend I call a truth seeker, which also means he wrestles with the scriptures. Because I don't believe that you can be a truth seeker, read the Bible, and not wrestle. Anyway, my friend is married to a faithful Catholic woman, and he often attends Catholic Mass with her. But he also participates in worship with us. Online. And he often comments on my email account about the sermons that I preach. But this week, he called me. I had to smile when he told me the text with which he was wrestling. Luke 14, 26. It was there in the lectionary, said Tim, and the priest talked about it, but you didn't. The text, whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yet even life itself, cannot be my disciple. I smiled because just two weeks prior to his phone call, we had been wrestling with that same text in our Sharpsburg Bible study and had not come to any satisfactory conclusions. But here's what my friend wanted to know. He said, you've been talking about the Greek a lot in your sermons lately, so please tell me that the Greek word that was translated hate is really softer than that. 
Tell me it really means love less. And I said to him, I'm sorry, but the Greek word used for hate in that passage, misko, is the same word that Jesus uses when describing feelings we have for our worst enemies. And it's the same word that he uses when he tells his disciples, no one can serve two masters because you'll either hate the one and love the other or love the one and hate the other. You cannot serve both God and wealth. The word that Jesus uses for hate is a strong, passionate word, which leaves us trying to figure out why in the world would Jesus say you have to hate your father and mother and wife and children and even your own life to be my disciples? You know, I've known in my life one person who hated his father and mother, his wife and his children. And let me tell you, that's not someone that I want to spend a lot of time with. He's so filled with hatred and bitterness that it's even hard to be around them. Now, a hard time imagining him as a follower of Jesus Christ. But then we have today's scripture. A man comes to Jesus and says, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus says, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man is nowhere to lay his head. Perhaps talking about the fact that he was just rejected from a Samaritan village. Another man Jesus calls to follow and he says, let me go bury my father. What does Jesus say? Let the dead bury their own dead. You go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And the final would-be disciple makes a simple request. Let me say farewell to my family before I follow you. And Jesus says, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. It's like Jesus doesn't want any disciples. You put all those sayings together with hating your father and mother and wife and children. And this is the conclusion that I have reached. It is impossible for any of us, in and of our own will and stubbornness, to become disciples of Jesus Christ. We just can't do it. To make sure I wasn't too far off course, I looked at a commentary by my favorite Bible commentator of late, Debbie Thomas. And she says, Jesus is a terrible salesman. That he carries truth and advertising to the nth degree, discouraging anyone and everyone who feels called to discipleship to make sure his disciples are few and far between. She says that Jesus is up front in telling all would-be followers that to be his disciple, a person has to embrace four things. One, rejection. Two, hardship. Three, disruption. Four, urgency. Rejection? Who wants to be rejected? We want to be accepted and loved, embraced. Hardship? No, we try to make our lives easier and happier. Disruption? How can we embrace the chaos of the world that's around us right now? We like things orderly and peaceful. Urgency, which is hard because when we get urgent, our hearts race and we do crazy things. I don't know about you all, but for me, I have a hard time doing any one of those things, much less all four. It is impossible for me, I've decided, to be a disciple of Jesus Christ on my own. And I think that's how Jesus wants it. You can't just choose to be a disciple of Christ like you might choose strawberry yogurt instead of peach. And you can't embrace all those difficult things if there are other options. There's an old country song in which the key line is, everyone wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Well, can I tell you the Jesus Christian version of that? Everyone wants 
wants to be my disciple, but nobody wants to die to himself or herself. In and of ourselves, we cannot become disciples of Jesus Christ. It's impossible. So I've been reading a book over the past two weeks entitled The Master Butcher's Singing Club by my current favorite author, Louise Erdrich. And one day I only managed to read in that book one page. One page. <coughs> because I had to think deeply about a verbal exchange between Delphine, the main character in the book, and her alcoholic father, Roy. Over and over, she's asking through the years why he drinks. His standard reply, I drink to fill the emptiness. And one day, when he says to her, I drink to fill the emptiness, she pushes over a chair and yells back at him, Hey, I've got news for you. Everyone does everything to fill the emptiness. And that hit me. <coughs> We're all empty, seeking something to fill us. And we try in various ways to fill the emptiness, the void that we feel inside. St. Augustine once says, said, there is a God-shaped hole in every human heart. And until we fill it with God, it will remain empty. But you can't come to Jesus just because you're feeling empty. Or you can come, and he will accept you and love you and save you, but you can't become his disciple to get away from the emptiness. No. You have to be seeking to embrace the fullness. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it to its fullest. Jesus doesn't want us to settle for being not empty. He wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit, with love, with joy, with peace. You know what I've always loved about Peyton, who we baptized today? I, who am not very observant, can read her like a book. Because when she's full of love, she beams and her arms come out and she embraces. And when she's not happy, her face is a tornado. <laughs> and she looks at you and pushes you away and says, no. I like that because it's real. What God wants to do for us in Jesus Christ is to fill us with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. The fruits of the Spirit. But again, we can't embrace those things on our own. Love our enemies? How can we do that? Be kind to those who do us wrong? The things that Jesus demands are so difficult. Leave behind your father and mother. Leave the dead to bury the dead. Don't say goodbye to your family. We're left saying, we can't do it. It's impossible. In fact, Peter, one of Jesus' disciples once said, well, Lord, if what you say is true, it's impossible for anyone to enter the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, yes, with man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And that brings us around to discipleship. It's not something we can embrace on our own. It's a calling. We have to be called by Jesus. We have to be willing to take risks. We have to be willing to endure rejection, hardship, disruption. We have to be urgent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. I can't count the number of people who have said to me in the last two months, our world is falling apart. 
It's coming apart at the seams. To which my standard answer is, and what are you doing? Are you praying? Are you acting? Are you loving? What are you doing in response? For God is at work in our world for sure. <coughs> Can we get in line with God and get to work? By the way, Jesus was rejected by a Samaritan village. And James and John, two of my favorite disciples, well, they want to make it right by calling down fire out of heaven to consume them. You know, just be done with those lousy people. But in a verse that you find only in the footnote, this is what Jesus said. I have come not to destroy lives, but to save them. Can we join Jesus in his saving work? Yes. But only if we answer his call and ask for the Holy Spirit to help us. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, we thank you that your call to us is so difficult. We thank you that you make us struggle, that you make us wrestle, that you make us come to you on your terms and not our own. Lord, fill not only our emptiness, but our entire lives with your Holy Spirit, that we might live for you this day and forevermore. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn, hymn number 497, Blessed Be the Time and Mind, stand as we sing together. 497.